Welcome to this installment of Above the Clouds. Today we are looking at uh, text number six from the 11th chapter of the fifth canto. It will instruct us how to have an illumined, enthusiastic mind. Here is the second half of the verse. When the flame in a lamp burns the wick improperly, the lamp is blackened. But when the lamp is filled with ghee and is burning properly, there is bright illumination. Similarly, when the mind is absorbed in material sense gratification, it causes suffering. And when detached from material sense gratification, it brings about the original brightness of Krishna consciousness. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada speaks about how to put this into a practice. The principle of the bright mind is. It is therefore concluded, he says, that the mind is the cause of material existence and liberation also. Everyone is suffering in this material world because of the mind. It is therefore proper to train the mind or to cleanse the mind from material attachment and engage it fully in the Lord's service. This is called spiritual engagement. The two functions of the mind or the two sides of the mind have been very nicely illustrated in one of my favorite instructive stories. It's called The Lady of Tears. Once there was a lady living in a village who constantly cried. When it rained, she cried. When the sun was shining, she also cried. And the reason? For her sadness were her two sons. One, let's call him the umbrella son, sold umbrellas and for his business he needed the rain because only then people saw the need to purchase an umbrella from him. The second son made papadams, these round flat a lentil dough things which have to be dried in the sun. And in order for him to make a profit, he had to have the sun drying his papadams. So when there was sunshine, the lady thought, oh no, no one will buy umbrellas for my first son. And she cried. And when it was rain, the lady thought, oh no, now no one uh, will come to my son who makes papa dams because he has no papa dams. He needs son to make papa dams. Therefore, she was known as the lady of tears who constantly cried. One day, a sadhu came by the village and the sadhu uh, got an information about this poor lady from the villagers. And then he suggested, my dear lady, when there is sun, think of your papadam's son who needs the sun to uh, sell his mm, uh, papas. And when there is rain, be happy for the rain because now your umbrella son can make a profit. It's a simple story with a deep principle. Focus your mind. Don't become controlled by the dark side of the mind, but do those things which bring about the bright side of the mind. And this principle was explained by 
William James, who many consider the father of modern psychology. He said, there is a law in psychology that if you form a picture in your mind of what you would like to be and you keep and hold that picture there long enough, you will soon become exactly as you have been thinking. William James abandoned the philosophy of determinism, that we are absolutely controlled by the material nature, for instance, of our mind. He said, my first act of free will shall be to believe in free will. What he wanted to say is that you have the choice, you have the freedom to direct your mind in the desired direction. As Prabhupada so nicely says, just as the mind is the cause of bondage, it can also be the cause of liberation. This is very important. The mind can be your friend when you control it. The mind can be your worst enemy if you fail to do so. In another part of the Bhagavatam, it comes in chapter 12 as the last text. Uh, I'm sorry, chapter 11 as text 17, uh, there is a very nice three-step process how to make the mind your friend. First of all, be attentive, be conscious. Second of all, when you see your mind goes down the dark road <laughs> where it only sees problems and anxieties. Neglect the mind, ignore it right from the very beginning. And the third is, and most probably this is the most important principle, is engage the mind in the service of Guru and Krishna. Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur asks us, how can I, who am weak, conquer the mind which is so very strong? There you are weak when you are without a weapon. You are strong when you hold the weapon of engagement in the service of Guru and Krishna. Vishwana Chakravati Thakur expresses it like this. Take up your weapon in the form of worshipping the Lord's feet as in the nine forms of bhakti. And then take also the mantra given by your guru. This is so effective. If you bring the mind into onto the spiritual level, where the mind is uh, contacting Krishna so the ninefold forms of bhakti, you know, Shravanam, hearing about him, doing kirtan, and then remembering Krishna, and so on and so forth, the mind will burn very brightly. Like it is said here in the Bhagavatam, it will burn properly and there is bright illumination. Um, these three things bring about the original brightness of a clear consciousness. Let us practice this for the coming week. Be attentive to what is going on. Be attentive to the thought traffic up there in your mind so that there is no crash and no accident or no going down the dark road. Then neglect when you catch it doing the wrong things. And finally, find out good engagement for the mind. For me, 
it always works when I read in the sacred scriptures like the Bhagavatam. After a few minutes, if I manage to be attentive, the mind has been lifted up. I wish you all the best. Please think deeply about this point and may your week be a wonderful week. See you for the next Above the Clouds.